In this video, I asked an AI to simulate what hell is like. It will take you on a journey from the moment you enter to the moment you literally go insane, along with some of the other beings you encounter. Viewer discretion is advised. When generating these images, some of the imagery was deemed too offensive to be generated, so I had to put a lot of work into find workarounds and solutions. Let's see what it comes up with. The ground beneath you is searing molten rock, spitting and hissing with volcanic fury. The air is thick with noxious fumes that sear your lungs and leave your eyes streaming. You cough and gasp, your skin blistering under the relentless heat. This is your welcome to hell. The landscape is a wasteland of twisted, skeletal trees, their branches reaching out like accusing fingers. The sky is a swirling vortex of crimson and black, devoid of any light but the infernal glow emanating from the ground. The screams of the damned echo around you, a chilling symphony of agony and despair. You wander deeper into this cursed realm, your bare feet burning on the scorched earth. Around you, the tormented souls twist and writhe in their various forms of punishment. Some are consumed by flames, their flesh burning away and regenerating in a cruel, unending cycle. Others are gnawed upon by monstrous creatures, their cries of pain swallowed by the relentless cacophony. You see a man, once a powerful king, now reduced to a whimpering beggar. He scrambles for scraps of food that materialize only to decay before he can touch them. This is the punishment for his greed and gluttony in life. Nearby, a woman once renowned for her beauty is locked in a perpetual struggle against an ever-growing, decaying corpse. This is the consequence of her vanity and obsession with outward appearances. The punishments are as varied as the sins they represent, each a twisted reflection of the transgressions committed in life. The more heinous the sin, the more horrific the torture. But hell isn't just about physical pain. It is also a place of profound psychological torment. Here you are forced to confront your worst fears and the full extent of your wrongdoing. You are surrounded by the reminders of your failures and the pain you inflicted upon others. There is no escape from the crushing weight of your conscience. For some, the most unbearable punishment is the isolation. In this vast wasteland, there is no solace, no comfort, no hope. You are utterly and completely alone, forever condemned to your own personal hell. But for others, the company they find is even worse. You encounter figures from history, infamous for their cruelty and evil. They revel in your suffering, taunting you with your past misdeeds. They gleefully point out every flaw, every weakness, every sin you committed. There are also those who are driven mad by their surroundings. They babble incoherently, their eyes glazed over with terror. They have lost all sense of self, all hope of salvation. They are mere shells of their former selves, forever trapped in the abyss. A grotesque, hulking figure emerged from the acrid smoke. His skin was mottled and charred, resembling a burnt offering, and his once fierce eyes were now sunken pits of smoldering embers. A thick, acrid stench like burnt flesh and sulfur clung to him like a shroud. You recognized him instantly. Adolf Hitler. His once manicured mustache was now a singed, wiry mess, and his uniform hung in tattered shreds on his skeletal frame. His eyes, once filled with cold, calculating hatred, now flickered with a desperate, pleading emptiness. So, he rasped, his voice a dry, harsh whisper. Another soul joins our eternal torment. A chilling laugh cut through the air, drawing your attention to another figure approaching. Genghis Khan, his once proud stature reduced to a hunched skeletal form. His skin, like Hitler's, was burnt and disfigured, and his eyes held a cold, calculating madness. Welcome, newcomer, Khan sneered, his voice a low growl, to a realm where emperors and paupers share the same fate. As they spoke, you noticed the subtle shifts in their forms. Their hands, once instruments of violence and control, were now twisted and gnarled, the bones pushing through the blackened skin. Their bodies, once strong and powerful, were now contorted with pain, their muscles perpetually spasming in an agonizing dance. The sight was horrific, yet strangely pitiful. These men, who had once inspired fear and trembling in the hearts of millions, were now reduced to mere shadows of their former selves. Their power and cruelty stripped away 
by the fires of hell. As they closed in, their eyes burned with a mixture of hatred and envy. You were a fresh soul, unmarred by the torments they had endured for eons. In your presence, they saw a reflection of their own lost humanity, a reminder of the lives they had destroyed and the souls they had condemned. And in that moment, you understood that hell was not just a place of physical torment, but also a psychological prison. It was a realm where the wicked were forced to confront the consequences of their actions, to relive the pain they had inflicted upon others, and to bear the weight of their sins for eternity. As you wander through this infernal landscape, you begin to understand the true nature of hell. It is not merely a place of physical pain, but a state of being. It is the complete and utter absence of love, hope, and peace. It is the eternal torment of a soul forever separated from God's grace. The heat intensifies, the screams grow louder, and the landscape becomes increasingly nightmarish. The boundaries between reality and hallucination blur, and you begin to question your own sanity. But even in the depths of despair, a flicker of hope remains. You remember the stories of redemption, of forgiveness, of love that conquers all. You cling to the possibility, however slim, that there may be a way out of this infernal prison. With newfound determination, you push forward, searching for any sign of escape, any glimmer of hope. You know that the journey to redemption will be long and arduous, but you are determined to find your way back to the light. Well, there you have it. Did your view of hell change after watching this video? Did it seem as scary as you thought it would be? Maybe you should think twice next time you want to sin. Instead of telling someone to go to hell, feel free to just share this video with them. That will really show them. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe because we will be exploring more thought experiments like this in the future. Also, if you really want to see what a living hell is like, click here to see what an AI would do as the president. I currently cannot make up my mind if its policies are good or secretly evil.